Obviously, I was not cued, okay? I wouldn't have taken that long. You know you can trust me after all this time. You know, um, before we're, uh, we start wrapping up, I just wanted to tell you guys um, how very privileged I feel to have been with you this evening. Um, in my world, you guys do it all. You come together a diverse group of people. You, you write the play, you produce it, you direct it, you act in it, and you star in it tonight, except that you change lives. You change the future. So I want to thank you for this remarkable experience. Thank you. So we've made it tonight's second top award and to present the 2013 Engineer of the Year Award, please welcome back the Chairman, Executive, Chief Executive Officer and President of Northrop Grumman, Mr. Wes Bush. Thank you, Belita. Well, we've come to the part of the evening that I've been especially anticipating. And this is because I've known Chris Hernandez for many years. And in fact, I've known of Chris even longer than that. As you can see in your programs, Chris's list of accomplishments is truly extraordinary. But there are several things that I can say about him that the program might not tell you. First is that over the years, wherever we've had the toughest problems, that's where you're likely to find Chris. Whether it was finding the solution to an urgent wiring problem on the B-2 stealth bomber development program back in the 1980s, to help in keeping the momentum going on the Global Hawk unmanned high altitude long endurance surveillance aircraft in the 1990s, right up to the X-47B unmanned carrier based aircraft today, Chris never shrinks from a challenge. And like the first responders that our company serves, when that bell rings, Chris is always at the ready. The other thing that I've come to learn about Chris over the years follows from the first. When he does grapple with the problem, you can certainly rest assured that he's going to solve it. I can also attest to his personal versatility. Chris has proven as great an asset as a leader, a manager, and an executive as he is an engineer. And this fact makes him especially effective in another dimension of his life, the effort and time that Chris puts back into our communities. Chris is a mentor, an advocate, and an inspirational source to young people who hunger for those things. And on top of all of that, Chris is about as nice and encouraging a colleague and a friend as anyone could imagine. Put it all together, and I cannot imagine a more appropriate recipient of this award on HENAC's 25th anniversary. And so on behalf of the men and women of Northrop Grumman, and on behalf of Great Minds in STEM, it gives me great pleasure to present you with the HENAC Engineer of the Year Award, Chris Hernandez. Well done, Chris, congratulations. Thank you very much, Wes. I'd like to start by thanking my parents for teaching me the values that I believe have contributed to my life's accomplishments, and to my lovely wife, Dawn, and my two boys, Christopher and James, for always supporting me, for without them, I surely would not be here. I'd also like to thank Northrop Grumman for providing me with many opportunities to contribute and to grow. I'm honored to be this year's recipient and pleased to have the opportunity to talk to such a prominent audience about something I feel very deeply about. The work that Great Mind in STEM is doing is of the utmost importance to our economy and to our national security. Why, you may ask? Because as a nation's technical capability goes, so goes the nation. This has been proven empirically for over 4,000 years as one observes the accomplishments and period of rule for past great nations. 
such as the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans, the British Empire, and today, the United States of America. All these nations had very strong science and engineering accomplishment during their periods of reign. For example, the Romans ruled the known world for over 800 years. They did this in a large part due to their science and engineering accomplishments. They engineered over 50,000 miles of roads that allowed quick movement of their troops to hotspots, and they facilitated commerce and communications. They created aqueducts to move water and made underground reservoirs to store it for the dry seasons. I believe their engineering accomplishments allowed them to be the world pow power they were for so long. This empirical evidence continues today with our great nation, the world's sole superpower. If you consider the world's greatest inventions that were created between 1750 and 2000, you will find that a U.S. inventor was the creator of over 65% of them. These inventions defined products that either made our lives easier, entertained us, or provided our military with advanced capabilities. All of them created jobs in a big way and therefore promoted economic growth. One last point is based on research done by Professor Eric Hanischek of Stanford University. A recent article in the Wall Street Journal on his work notes that countries with higher math and science skills have grown faster than those with lower skilled populations. They show a linear relationship between standard scores and GDP per capita. Our place in the world is not guaranteed. As a matter of fact, recent trends indicate a sliding of our position relative to other nations in standard math and science test scores. We also witnessed the rest of the world sending students to our country to get advanced degrees. Today, more than half of all graduate students enrolled in engineering programs are foreign nationals. In the past, this wasn't much of a problem because they would stay in the US after graduation and join our workforce. No longer is this the case. Now they go home. There's also been specific campaign on the part of some countries to recruit some of our best university professors away from the US to go to their countries to teach and help establish universities there. So it is in all of our best interest to continue to promote STEM fields, especially in the Hispanic community since it remains the fastest growing demographic of our country. Organiz organizations like Great Minds in STEM are vital to promoting these thoughts and I thank you for your past support of them and hope you will continue in the future. Now, thank you. Now for all you young people out there, the adults with us tonight already committed or they wouldn't be here. But if the little nudge I just gave them is successful, that may take their further action to create opportunities for you. So when you come across one of these opportunities, you need to be prepared to jump on it, attack it like there's no tomorrow, giving it your absolute best, for you are our future. Thank you all very much for listening, and enjoy your evening.